Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. A lot of you I talked to on social media have asked me recently if my 2015 Mustang was finished as I haven't done a video on it for quite a while. In my opinion, anybody who says their car is finished is simply lying to themselves there's always something else you can do to it. In the case of my 15 GT, I'm happy with the power, I love the sound of my exhaust system, I love the way it looks with the wheels, but one area I would say is not quite finished would be my suspension. While I do have lowering springs and sway bars, my factory shocks and struts definitely don't work the best with that kind of suspension. I was planning my next upgrade, the answer kind of presented itself in the form of this Ridetech HQ suspension kit. I ran the Ridetech system on my 2011 and absolutely loved it, so today it's going to be the next modification for my 2015 Mustang GT. This is the Ridetech Level 2 HQ coilover kit that's going to fit all 2015 through 2016 Mustangs. The HQ stands for handling quality, I mean this is designed to give you much better performance overall out of any 2015 through 2016. You're going to have 26 total adjustment points as far as the compression, plus you also have height adjustability with the coilovers. The entire kit is complete, comes with everything you do to install, both the front and rear setup. The kit comes with a steel adjustable monotube front strut, and then aluminum adjustable monotube rear shocks and the Hyperco 2.5 inch springs. The springs are designed by Hyperco specifically for Ridetech to work with the weight of the S550 chassis so they're ready to go right outside of the box. This kit will allow an inch and a half to a three inch drop, but recommended rate is one and three quarter to two inches because once you go past two inches, you're not going to have enough caster camber adjustment to make the car align properly. The Ridetech kit is what I would call a 98% bolt-on kit. The front is a direct replacement, no modifications necessary. For the rear, you do have to install four rib nuts for additional support for the rear shock bracket. The kit also includes the rib nut tool and the drill bit so there's no tools required beyond the normal hand tools for installation. For this installation, you'll need a lift and a pole jack or a jack and jack stands and a good selection of hand tools. The only specialty tool required is the rib nut tool which is provided by Ridetech. The first step in the installation is to get the car off the ground and remove the wheels. In case you haven't met him yet, this is Freddy. He's our new guy. We're doing a lot of our truck videos. He's also going to give me a hand on some installation videos as well. The strut in the front is just like removing it to do the springs, which I've done a million times. I'm going to let Freddy handle the installation today on the front. I'll help out with the back. Now, the first thing we have to do to take the strut off is take off the brake caliper so we can get access to the bolts and nuts on the strut. All right, to remove this caliper, all you do is remove the two 15 millimeter bolts securing it. And when you remove the caliper, you want to make sure it doesn't hang by the brake line. You want to put it in a nice, secure place. Now, you don't absolutely need to, but we're going to remove the rotor just to give us a little bit more room. Now we can begin to remove the strut. First thing you want to do is remove the sway bar end link. It's a 17 millimeter nut on the back, and the front nut is an 18 millimeter. Now we have to remove this ABS line. It's just secured with some clips. Just pop them out. And there's another one on the side of the knuckle. Now before we can move the strut bolts, we have to lower the car and support the control arm with a jack. Now that we have the lower control arm supported with a jack, we can remove the strut nuts. They are a 24 millimeter nut. You don't need anything on the bolt because the bolts are actually splined. Now to remove the bolts, you want to put the nut back on a few threads and then hit the nut with the hammer. You don't want to hit just the bolt, but you could damage the threads. Now to remove the two bolts on the strut and spindle, we're going to remove two of these nuts on top of the strut, but we're going to leave one in. This is going to give us some play and allow for the bolts to come out a little easier. This is one of the nice things about the Ride Tech suspension kit is your front strut is a full direct replacement. We don't have to disassemble this, take nothing off of it. This is ready to go in as it is. 
case you're wondering about the weight difference, not a huge weight difference. You're talking about a pound and a half roughly lighter for the Ride Tech versus the stock setup. Now the Ride Tech struts are side specific. So you go to install them, this is gonna face outward. You wanna make sure this tab here, which is for your sway bar, is facing the back of the car. Before it goes in a car, a couple things you wanna make sure of. These slotted holes here, you wanna make sure the one is towards the outside, towards the wheel, these two are towards the inside. Like I said, this whole thing is assembled, doesn't mean it's already tight. Double check everything is tight before we put the assembly on the car. We're ready to install our new core lever. We're gonna start off by putting these three bolts in the strut mount. Now we're gonna install the coil lever. We're gonna get it into the knuckle and then try to line it up with the bolts up top. Now that we have the upper strut nuts and bolts hand tight, we're gonna install the strut to the knuckle. First thing we're gonna install is this cam bolt. Slides on with the washer. lock washer, and then the nut. Then on the bottom, we're gonna install the factory nut and bolt. And reinstall the factory nut. Now we're going to reinstall the sway bar bracket. And you might need to jack up the control arm a little bit. And reinstall the factory nut. Now that we have everything loosely installed, we're going to start by tightening the top strut bolts. They are a 9 16 nut and bolt. All right, the upper strut nuts and bolts are tight. Now we can tighten up the knuckle. Now we're gonna tighten this eccentric bolt on the top of the knuckle. You wanna make sure the washer is inside this indentation. You don't want it hanging over the edge. You want it seated properly before torquing it. And now we're gonna tighten the sway bar end link. Now if you go to tighten this and the shaft starts to spin, put an 18 millimeter wrench on it and then a 10 millimeter socket on the shaft. Now reinstall the ABS sensor wire. Once you have everything assembled, RideTech says to torque the strut bolts to 150 foot-pounds. All right, everything's tightened up. Just repeat the process on the other side. Now we're gonna move on to the back of the car. The first thing we have to do is get some of the stock components out of the way. We're gonna start by taking the rear sway bar with the end links, because that does have to be relocated. Then we can remove our factory shocks, shock mounts, and finally our factory springs. Now with the brake hose bracket removed, we can remove the sway bar. To remove this end link, it's a six millimeter hex key and an 18 millimeter wrench. With 
basically sway bar and links off. Now we can move on to the brackets that hold the sway bar to the body itself. The next step will be just like a spring or shock replacement in the back. What we're going to do is disconnect the brackets up here, the line itself, and then unbolt the subframe and lower it down. Obviously make sure you support the subframe before you take the bolts out, then we can lower it down, remove the spring, and start to work on installing our coilover. We'll start with the bolt for the brake line. While you have that socket in your hand, there's two little support bolts for the bracket in the front. Remove those as well. You can just loosen them up. I find it easier just to remove them. Now before we let the subframe down, we're going to remove the bolts from the top of the shock mount. Then we'll remove both subframe bolts and lower everything down, removing the shock and the spring. Now with the subframe supported, again, make sure you have a jack underneath it. We're going to remove the subframe bolts. Before we lower down the subframe, we're going to take off both these bolts to remove the shock. It gives us more room to get the spring out of the way. And now we're ready to assemble our rear coilovers. So we're going to start by turning this all the way clockwise until it's tight and use a small Torx bit to remove the adjuster. Now take the adjuster sleeve, put it on from the bottom, and like three turns to get it started. Now grab one of your Delrin washers and put that in place over the adjuster. Our spring down into place. Make sure it is seated properly. Another washer on the top. Now the spring cap. Now this little ring, you're basically put this down over the top here. And snap that into place. Now what you want to do now is turn it upside down. Right now we have zero preload on our spring. So what you want to do now is turn this, basically until the slack's gone. It's going to be real tight again, so make sure you know, it's tight enough again so that the spring nothing is moving. Now we're at zero preload. To install this, what we're going to do is go half inch above zero preload. We're going to use that as our starting point. What you're going to do is measure the flat part of the bottom of the shock up half an inch from where we're at now and that'll be our set point we're going to start with. Rod Tech includes a spanner wrench you can use to adjust this and again we're going to adjust it up half an inch from zero preload. Perfect and just install the set screw. I don't think crank is too tight, just get it snug so it's not gonna move. And then reinstall the adjuster. Our coilover is ready to go on our car. Since we're going with a coilover, the upper shock mount now has the pressure of the shock and the spring, so Ridetech beefs it up a little bit. What we're gonna do next is bolt this into place using the new hardware, and then we're gonna drill two new holes at the bottom down here, 
and we're gonna install the rib nuts there. That way it'll be four bolts holding to the chassis instead of just two. Now we're gonna mark the holes for the Sharpie so we know where to drill them. Then we're gonna take off the bracket and drill the holes. RodTech provides this 17 30 second drill bit to drill the holes for the rib nuts. My opinion, don't start with this bit. Start with like an eighth, eighth inch, something smaller, work your way up to the larger bit. RodTech includes this rib nut installation tool, which has this washer. Basically the way it works, you put the rib nut in, you thread this in until it touches. And you're gonna hold a wrench on this here, keep it tight while turning that. And as you turn that, this will expand on the inside and hold the rib nut in place. It is something you can do yourself, two-man job, if it makes it a lot easier to have somebody actually wrench it while somebody else holds on to it. This is what the rib nut should look like when you're finished. You want to make sure you can see the threads. The threads are pulled towards the surface and the nut does not move at all. Then you know it's installed properly. You can move on to the next one. With the rib nuts installed, now we can actually install the bracket using the supplied hardware by Ride Tech. Put everything in loosely at first, get it all lined up, then go back and tighten it down. And we're going to torque these top bolts to 65 foot-pounds. Alright, now we're going to torque the lower bolts to 23 foot-pounds. And now we can install the lower mount. Now we're ready to get our coilover installed. Before we do that, we have to connect it to this bracket. Now what you want to do is the bracket's going to mount with the round part facing the forward part of your car. The coilover is going to sit like that. Make sure you install it the correct way so your adjuster is facing outwards so you can actually reach it. First thing you need to do is take this square headed bolt, put that in the bottom here. We're going to take our aluminum spacers, put them in the bottom of the shock. And assemble the whole thing with the provided nut and bolt. All right, once assembled, then we're going to tighten down and we're going to torque to 75 foot pounds. Now, with the coilover and mount assembled, we can install this on the car. You want to make sure the coilover is mounted on the rear of this bracket. Then once you have the coil over in place, insert this 3 8 bolt into the other side of the bracket. Now install a washer and a nylon nut on the bottom. And now we're going to reinstall our subframe bolts.
Now we're going to torque the two big subframe bolts to 175 foot-pounds. Now we're going to torque these smaller bolts to 55 foot-pounds. Now that the subframe is properly torqued, we can jack up the control arm and line up the coilover with the upper mount. First thing you want to do is put the inserts on the shock itself. Slide it in. Get your bolt with a washer on it. Slide it through. Then a washer and nut on the other side. Now we can torque the upper coilover bolt to 75 foot-pounds. All right, now just repeat the process on the other side. Now we're gonna be installing these sway bar relocation brackets. They move the sway bar slightly towards the rear of the vehicle. So you want these smaller holes towards the rear of the bracket and the bigger holes, which are the factory holes, towards the front of the bracket and they reinstall using the factory hardware. Now we're gonna install the sway bar bracket on the other side. Now that we have both coilovers installed in the rear and we have both sway bar relocation brackets, we can reinstall our sway bar. Attach the sway bar to the new relocation bracket using the provided hardware. And do the same thing to the other bracket. Okay, our sway bar is now secured to the new relocation bracket. We can reinstall the end links. All right, now we're gonna reinstall our end link, put it through the sway bar. And this sway bar requires the special brake bracket. Your OEM sway bar will install the same way, but this sway bar requires this bracket here. Reinstall the nut. And then the bolt through the brake hose bracket and the nut behind it and tighten everything up. Now repeat the process on the other side and your installation is finished. Now the installation is finished, we'll discuss the adjustability of the coiler, because honestly that's why you'd buy a system like this in the first place. Remember when we assembled the rear shocks, we went half inch above zero preload. We want an inch above preload on the front, which is what Rytec recommends for about an inch and a half to inch and three quarter drop. And what you want to do as far as the adjustability, turn the rebound all the way up to full step. And then what you want to do to start is go 20 clicks the opposite direction. Now that is going to be a fairly soft ride. You could go further down, but beyond that, it's too soft even for any kind of performance driving. Start here, get your ride height where you want it, and then you can adjust the rebound to get the firmness, and you're ready to go.
My car's ride height is honestly about where it was before with a slight rake to the front, but that's where I wanted it. The benefit now is not only is the car lowered, thanks to the RideTech shocks and struts, it's fully adjustable, and the coil levers, I can really dial on the height where I want it. I do want to mention when this install is done, the first thing you want to do is get the car aligned. You don't want to drive until you get a good alignment, make sure everything's in spec. As far as the installation, figure about five to six hours probably for the install, plus a little bit of time to dial it in. But take your time, we'll be back on the road in no time.